Yes, guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to six things we learned from Liverpool 4, Chelsea 1. Slightly better second half, dreadful first half. Do not let anything that we saw from referees today distract you from the fact that that was once again another woeful, fightless, meaningless Chelsea performance on the whole. Better moments in the second half. The first was a shambles, and we will begin by talking about that. But before we get into this video, I would love to ask you to hit the like button, even just for me, because I'm absolutely wind taking out my sails again from this. Subscribe to the George Benson Football Channel, and if you want to watch something a bit lighthearted that isn't Chelsea getting battered, then I'll leave a link to my vlog channel in the description. Ridiculous. It's incredible that at half time, Chelsea were only 2 0 down. It's absolutely mind blowing to me that Liverpool weren't able to break some kind of Anfield Premier League record with how many goals they scored against Chelsea today. If it wasn't for Petrovic from that first half, this could have been a cricket score. We might have been needing to add extra space to the board where they show the scoreline at Anfield. That first half is an absolute shambles. The fact that almost half of the players that were out on the field are yellow carded before half time, we didn't win a single... 50-50. I don't think we strung any more than three passes together that weren't from centre-back to centre-back. Ben Chilwell, I don't know if he thinks that because Joe Gomez is Liverpool's left-back, he's got a chance to sign for Liverpool to be their left-back if Robertson's injured. I don't know if he was, like, trying to play into the next Liverpool manager after Jurgen Klopp's hands, where it's like, this guy's good at getting assists. Assists when he's playing for the other flipping team. It's an absolute disaster of a Chelsea performance. Ben Chilwell, the first, well, to be honest, I wrote it down after 35 minutes. I don't think I've ever seen a Chelsea captain put in a shift that is as woeful as what we saw from Chilwell. And to be quite honest, as we get to the 50th minute of the first half, nothing changes there whatsoever. He somehow gets a yellow card for one of the most shocking dives you will ever see in football. Yes, in the early phases of that first half, I do think Chelsea have an argument to get themselves a penalty in the opening four minutes of the game, which, of course, if Gallagher's penalty is given as a penalty, which, again, I think, to be quite honest, I think it is soft. He does go down. He kind of goes into Virgil van Dijk's leg. But you've seen them given. And I think as the first half went on, you could see that the referee, Paul Tierney, was absolutely in the mood to give everything against Chelsea and back the crowd at Anfield that wanted to see their team go out there and put in a performance to show that they can win the Premier League title this season. Gallagher goes down. It isn't a pen. From that moment on, Chelsea capitulated. It's right. We're not going to get a decision from the referee, so we may as well not show up today. And that's exactly what we saw. I think there are a couple of decisions that do go against us that were questionable. I think the Caicedo yellow card absolutely set the tone for the rest of this game. I think it's not the foul that gets Caicedo the yellow. It's the reaction. And you know that these days in the Premier League, you can't even kick the ball a foot in front of you and not get a yellow card for it if the opposition have been given the foul. Caicedo throws his hands in the air. The game is still nil-nil. And to be quite honest, it was all forced from Liverpool. It's not just Chelsea's errors and lack of confidence, maybe lack of belief, lack of maturity. That's the key word here. It's not just all about having a lack of all of these things. It's about what Liverpool have in abundance. They have the desire to press. They have the desire when they don't have the ball to ensure that even if they don't win it back with a clean tackle, Chelsea will just give it to them because we cannot cope with being under pressure. And from the moment that Caicedo gets a yellow card, we start seeing yellow cards flooding like they're a London bus. It's an absolute joke what we've just witnessed here tonight. But Petrovic, I've got to say this from him. He is the only shining light in that team in that first half. He was absolutely fantastic, making big saves. And I think at this point in time, I'm looking at the fact that we'd won four out of our last five games. That's great news. We're the most informed team in the Premier League, but yet we played half the teams that are going to be playing in the Championship next season. I, I honestly, I just don't understand. The first 20 minutes, we we basically didn't have the ball because even when we had it, we gave it straight to them. Enzo Fernandez, 
Like, this guy is just getting out-muscled by McAllister, out-muscled by Shaboslai. When he loses the ball, he's got absolutely no turn to get back and win it again. It's a disaster. The second goal is just like... Between Caicedo, Enzo and Raheem Sterling, who's tracking back for Connor Bradley, a 20-year-old. Credit to him. It's a brilliant finish and what a half he had. Chelsea are then 2-0 down. The game is officially done. From that point, Badia Shield then brings down Diogo Jota and it's, an, it's a stonewall penalty. I think the referee could have given that first one. But at this point, like, there's, there's no questions that could have been had. Chelsea were just beyond a joke. Pochettino is almost swinging for people on the sidelines from what we can see from the television angles. it's He must be looking at this thinking, what have I got to work with? But at the same time, he's been absolutely outclassed, outcoached by Jurgen Klopp to a point where it's like Liverpool and Chelsea had drawn the last seven matches between the two of us before we got into this game. The, the golf in class between the manager, between the players, across the board is just harrowing. Chelsea are so far away from this Liverpool team that it is laughable. It's absolutely laughable at this point. And we're already here. We haven't got into the boxes, so let's get into them now. Box number one is a red for Ben Chilwell. Chelsea's captain. I had my mate who's a Liverpool fan messaged me before the game saying, Ben Chilwell is captain. That's a weird one. He's not captain material. And I was thinking, well, yeah, he's actually the vice captain. Rhys James is the captain, but... Within about 20 minutes of that first half, I'm sending him a message saying, I think you might be right, mate. It was an utter shambles from Chilwell today. And I think it's one of those where maybe he's just not fit enough to be starting games. Maybe he's just nervous about reoccurring injuries. If that's the case, then Chelsea need to buy another left back. But instead of that, we're loaning out the other natural left back that we have at our football club to Borussia Dortmund and watching him start really well in Germany. It makes no sense to me how we can be sat here in this January transfer window. We still haven't got a striker. And in Kunku, to be fair to him today, he comes on, scores a really, really nice goal, but there's no service to him. So you can even argue that even if Chelsea bought a striker, how does he even get the ball? In that first half in particular... Ben Chilwell is trying to get forward, but as a result of trying to get forward, the ball never makes it anywhere near the box because A, there's no one in there, but B, more importantly, in the process of Chilwell going forward, Chelsea are stuck, Liverpool counter, and they've just got so many clinical players in their team. And ironically, their striker, Darwin Nunes, can hit the bar three or four times or whatever it is today in the post, and yet we still concede a bundle of goals. And to be fair, the second half was better than the first half. But when the Chelsea captain is getting hoiked at half time, and then the other guy, who's also supposed to be the vice captain to the vice captain, Gallagher, is also hoiked for a shocking first half performance as well. You're just like, what is Poch? What? What? I don't know if I want to blame Poch here. I don't know if I just want to blame all of these players. But from Chilwell. It was an absolute disaster. Box number two is also a red for Noni Madweki. This guy, I don't know what it is about Noni. I think I was, I was bewildered or bewitched, I think, by those goals that he scored at Luton. Which, by the way, we've only beaten Luton away in the last six league games. And other than that, we've lost and we've conceded at least two in every single one of those games. The problem that I've got with Noni is you're watching Cole Palmer in that first half. He's being battered by the Liverpool players, going in hard with tackles, in the right way as well, conducting themselves well. Noni Madweki's got less control of the ball when he's stood up and he's got it at his feet than Cole Palmer does when he's in a bundle on the floor. He's got no ball control whatsoever, running into trouble. When it comes to tracking back, it's almost non-existent. And it's an absolute correct decision from Pochettino, who credit to him. Some would argue that you've got players like Gusto and Kunku coming on when we're 2-0 down at half-time for a game that we've basically got no chance in because of the golf in class. But you can't think that. So credit to Pochettino for noticing here that Chilwell was having a shocker, Madweki was having a shocker, and he brings them both off. Box number three is a red for Enzo Fernandez because, quite frankly... Chelsea, I said in the preview for this game that we needed to try 
and control the midfield. But the reality of the situation is, Shabazz lies bigger and stronger. McAllister is absolutely brilliant. And he's bigger. And he's stronger. And Enzo gets absolutely bullied. And when Chelsea are in control of the possession, and we're slow in the build-up as we always seem to be, then it's okay because Enzo can make those passes and he makes those long balls and he can be really good. But like as soon as we come up against a team with any kind of physical presence, it's a joke. It's an absolute joke. And we see Cassidy come on in the 85th minute. But to be quite honest, I could have taken Enzo off after 60. Yes, Chelsea improved a bit in that second half. Yes, there's a stone wall penalty again on Christopher Nkunku that just doesn't get given which at 3-1, that could make it 3-2, and then all of a sudden, it's a different atmosphere. But look, as much as I can talk about all of these Chelsea players and how awful we were today as a whole, I think we were fighting against 12, 13 men. The 12th man is the fact that it's Anfield and the, the fans are behind the players, which they should be because they, they could go on and win a quadruple this season. But secondly, the officiating... Like, as much as we've seen many times that we think as Chelsea fans, the officiating's not been good enough, but let's just take it away from the Chelsea element for a second. Is it aliens that we have looking at these VAR screens? What do they see to suggest that Virgil van Dijk hasn't gone through the back of Nkunku and just booted him? Like, what is what have they not seen there, which is that that is not a penalty? But getting back to the boxes, Enzo needs to improve. He needs to be more physical. And he needs to get quicker because he's so slow. He is so slow. I love Enzo. I do. And I do think he could be a great player. Don't know if it's going to be in the Prem. Box number four is a red for Benoit Badia-Shiel, who, to be quite honest, I thought that this guy was actually a good defender. I thought that Todd Bowley went to France in his Lamborghini and bought us back a centre-back. I don't think he did. I don't think this guy's a centre-back at all. Three of the got well, two of the goals in particular. The third one, which is about as FIFA classic football goal as you can imagine. Connor Bradley goes down the right hand side, who had an unbelievable game, crosses it in, Spozlai heads it, Baddy Shield nowhere near Connor Bradley. Goal number four. Luis Diaz scores his first goal at Anfield since August. Baddy Shield thinks he's got it. No, nope, he's got no desire to win that ball. Hook it out for a throw in, mate. Do whatever you need to do. Boot it over the bar. Try and hit it out the stadium so you've got a souvenir to go and collect when you go on the bus in embarrassment afterwards. But no, nothing. Ben Wabadi Ashil had an absolute shocker. Gives the penalty away as well. Of course, by fouling Diogo Jota. He's just a bit, he's just a bit limbs, isn't he? Not the kind of limbs that we want to see in the away end for Chelsea scoring goals. He's just gangly. And like he's got no control. Absolutely no control today. Box number five is a red for Raheem Sterling, who is absolutely at fault for Connor Bradley's goal. He's not tracking him. There's no desire. There's no urgency. There's an opportunity in that second half when Nkunku's on where Sterling just gets the ball stuck in his feet. He doesn't hit it forwards to Nkunku. He's then offside as he steps into the opposition half. It's just schoolboy stuff. Needs to be better. And it's... It... Oh, man. Um, honestly, it's, it's every time I start to get a bit positive... We just put in another shoddy display. Second half was better, yes, but I mean, it wasn't really better from Sterling, was it? Like, well, I don't get it. Chelsea, like, we've gone through January. We've not signed anybody. We see Cassidy come on for a five-minute cameo. We bought him back from loan from bloody Leicester in the championship. Like, there's not enough quality. There's not enough good footballers in this squad. I don't think Sterling is it. I think he's finished in the Premier League at a top level. Liverpool are such a top-level team. They could have scored 10 Goals against us tonight. Ten goals. The Premier League for me, like, I, I, yes, there's a lot of teams above us who are slipping. Aston Villa are starting to slide down. Newcastle haven't been consistent. Brighton are getting battered 4-0 at Luton. Man United are Man United. But, like, is there is there really any hope that Chelsea can actually finish the season in a European place when you see how void we are of quality when we come up against a big side? I think we're going to get battered by a couple of other big teams before the end of this season because there doesn't seem to be fight in this Chelsea team. Box number six, I've given a red to Pochettino because I just think overall, as much as the substitutions were made, and yes, we did get a bit better in that second half, it's risky to bring Gusto on and Kunku on. Like, does he actually... He's got to. He's got to do it to save face because we've got to try 
and get something out of this game. And yeah, we scored a goal. Yeah, we could have had two penalties overall, but like, come on. Come on, you're getting absolutely outclassed. And yes, he can't make the players drive, but he like, he, he looks glum. He looks beat. He really does. And I know that we've been winning games. I know that we were the informed Prem team in the lead up to this. But <sighs> Jurgen Klopp's leaving Liverpool with trophies because he's not got the energy anymore and he might have more. Has Pochettino got it in him? I don't know. I really don't know. Going to wrap this video up here. Let me know the six things that you learned from this game in the comments down below. If you can, leave a comment. Subscribe if you are new. Hit the like button as well somehow just to help me out here because I'm... I hate Chelsea losing, man. I hate it.